Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home warm farming channel. If you're new here, please know that this is a warm, friendly, welcoming vermiculture community. Uh, we don't have any of the haters here, and if we do, they get deleted or canceled, as the new kids like to say. Today it's going to be a full workup of blue from end to end. Purchased a new screen, just like I did before. It appears to have the same quality as it did I don't know, five years ago when I bought it. I will go ahead and put a link for that in the description below in case you do want to get the same that I do, which is a one quarter inch. I'll put the metric up there for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really thorough sifting of this so that I can put all of the undigested chunks back to the business end of the bin. And uh, yeah, the mice are eating the plastic. I just, I have no idea, no words. Still winning. I don't see any mouse tracks any place here on the bin. So I think I might be winning, not sure for sure. So let's get started. I'm just gonna take this and I am going to sift this onto a tray. And then whatever's on top, I'm just gonna throw back down there. It'll get wet again and the worms will have the opportunity to eat it again. They just usually take about one, one good handful. If you overload the screen, then it doesn't really sift so well. So it's kind of important. It also gives you an opportunity to take out any plastic that somehow or other got into this part of the bin. I did have some donations that I took for office paper once upon a time, and I swear that is exactly where these are all coming from. And that was over a year ago. So although getting free office paper from people sounds like a good idea, sometimes it's really not if you weren't the one who did the shredding. They think they're being helpful, but in the end, it just causes you more work. So right now, the harvests for these are just going to go into a tub and wait for me to start my seeds here in a couple of months. If you've been around here very long, you do know that I am a hot pepper aficionado. And because they are from such a tropical place, even the ones that I plant in January sometimes don't actually give me a ripe fruit until August or September. Most things that you are going to start from seed, I don't start until March, like brassicas or the like. But when it comes to hot peppers, you got to get them started early or you don't get anything. Now these castings will go into a tub that is mostly sealed and I will keep it moist by adding water and sometimes a little bit of worm chow just in case any of the cocoons do some hatching. Not sure how well you can hear but even though I gave the new dogs some very tasty treats that should take them a good long time to eat in their kennels, they are still protesting being in doggy jail. So if you hear them a little bit, I'm sorry. The, uh, the turkey tendons or whatever they're called should be enough to keep them happy. I think they're $5 a piece, but since you're not supposed to do rawhide anymore and the dogs I have are too big for hooves and, and horns and stuff like that, they could swallow them. This is the best thing I can do somewhere, you know, between a, it's kind of rawhide-like, but it's made out of tendons. I have no idea how that happens and I am afraid to Google it. But generally it makes them very happy for several hours. You would think that it would keep them at least in standby mode for the half hour it's gonna take me to film this video. All right, we're getting some good stuff here. Haven't had a sieve for months and months and months. So I'm really going to take out a lot. I have a lot of bedding, if you can imagine, with uh, new uh, puppies in the house. I have been buying a lot off of Am Amazon. And so there's actually a lot of Amazon boxes that now are gonna get turned into worm food. So I've got two five gallon buckets that the worms are going to get that are just straight up Amazon boxes. 
both dogs came from Texas and they uh, have never seen snow. I don't even know if they've seen freezing weather yet, so I got them both coats. And because we do a lot of walking, I also got some boots. I know, I know, dogs and boots, you think I'm nuts. But we get a lot more ice here than we do proper snow. And because they are big dogs, really don't wanna have to pay for a tendon surgery. All right, let me see, how are we doing? I think the moisture is going to be what stops me here. If it doesn't go through the sieve, then I'm done. But it did probably get, I don't know, 10 gallons? That's pretty good for a harvest, even for blue. A lot of people are thinking, my God, I don't get 10 pounds or 10 gallons worth of harvest a year. But when you have a 55 gallon bin, the, you know, normally I will get four to five gallons a month, at least in the warm seasons. In the winter, the worms slow down, but, and then we get a little bit less. It takes them longer to finish things. Like this right here may look kind of done, but it's really not 100% to the castings part that I would like to see it at before I use it in seed starting. Now what I'm doing right now is getting air into the bin. You can see where it's kind of clumped, being down low. The upper levels are kind of heavy kind of compresses things. And you're also noticing that there are not a lot of worms here because this is the finished end. In theory, there's not going to be very many worms. That's the whole point of this wedge system is to make sure the worms have the inspiration to move down to the other end of the bin. And it doesn't matter if you go left or right, the worms don't care. Put in the comments below, are you a lefty or a righty? I, I am a left-handed person, but highly ambidextrous, so I do a lot of things right-handed. Some people that are totally left-handed, I feel bad for them. I use a mouse right-handed, scissors are no problem right-handed, but I know there's a lot of people out there who are seriously left-handed and life can kind of suck to try and get everything in our brand. There we go. Looks good. I have heard that some animals can be left and right-handed. Let me know in the comments below if you've, if you've heard that. Do you remember which animals it was? Is it just monkeys or can it be like dogs that are left-footed or cats or whatever? I just have the one son, and he is right-handed. So he gets to be uh, part of the, what, there's 7% of the humans are, are left-handed. And they joke about us being the only ones in our right minds. That's kind of a nice worm concentration there. Not a proper worm ball, but pretty darn good. And... Uh, Here's one of the blue worms. You can tell that it's still about 74 degrees in the basement because the blue worms are still zipping along. So here, uh, once we get into the very wintry kind of weather here, um, I'm going to start an experiment with some of the little, I don't know what they're called. They're like Aero Gardens, but it's not an Aero Garden brand. And I'm going to try and everybody always talks about, you know, I'd really like to do that, but honestly, I don't want to spend the money on the nutrients or it's not organic or, or all of that business. So I'm going to try an experiment this summer or this winter when I can't be out gardening. Let me know if you're interested in it is that there's going to be an arrow garden that's using the normal arrow garden stuff. And then there's going to be one that I'm going to try and use worm castings and natural organic items. Now they do have pumps, etc. So I'm going to have to filter everything that I put in there. I'm not sure if the worm goodness is going to be good enough when filtered. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. Are you going to be interested to see that? I'm going to do it either way, but I kind of like having the herbs and the cherry tomatoes in the winter time. And so I'm going to do it anyway, and if you guys want to see that, let me know. So 
So no proper worm ball yet, but we have had a good amount of worms in here. There's probably about 10 or 12 pounds of worms in here. Most of them are very small. You would think, because I spent $5 on one of these tendon things, that they could be quiet for a half hour. I am afraid that I have spoiled them rotten. I think that's what's happened. They are under the impression that they need to be wherever I am, especially if they can hear my voice. So apologies if it's driving you nuts. Uh, I guess maybe just turn off the sound and put on the closed captioning? I don't know. Uh, it is what it is. All right, so now we have our finished part. Our middle part here that is still very much in process. You can see all of the bedding and some of the food. And then today we are going to put in a ton of more bedding and not a crazy amount of food. Uh, my son started his own worm bin and he co-opted some of the uh, garbage. So there's a little bit less for Blue to eat this week. But he, you know, never fear. He's still going to get a couple gallons of food. Here's our first five gallon bucket of prepared bedding. It's just shredded Amazon boxes and a little bit of coconut coir. And now let's get him his feeding. This has got to be the mother of all diverse feedings. These are puppy treats. Uh, they are sweet potato chips. I mean, it seems awesome to me. I love sweet potato chips. Uh, neither one of the dogs care for them. In fact, I was given a box. I was given a bag of these by a friend whose dog also doesn't like them. I don't know. It seems good. Nice, right? So then we also have some bread and cabbage and cat food because all of my children are high maintenance. Got some tofu here that didn't make it. Got some kale, bread. And if you do put bread in a bin, um, I'm not sure if you can tell here, but my cat got into the bread. Okay, they got the weirdest animals in this house. So kale, peppers, tomatoes, cabbage, bread, some eggshells here. Those will take years. And let's get them some more bedding. And so that makes about that makes about one third of each. One third of the new stuff, one third of the in-process stuff that's a couple months old, and then one third of the mostly processed stuff here. I'm gonna have to buy something with uh, this foam again because the stupid mice ate it. This is how I usually keep contact in here to keep the moisture on the feeding end. And then I generally put a tray with my super unorganized seedling stuff here. And this is how I keep this with contact so that I don't have any problems with it drying out. If it's dry, they won't eat it. Also, dry is bad for worms. Okay, and if you're still here, hang on. Let's go see what the European night crawlers have done in a week with the food I fed them that I didn't show you guys. Okay, here's the original European night crawlers. Taking a look at them pretty close to see if we've got anything. Looks like they are super happy. Pretty good sized worm ball there. You hear them? For people who are new to the worm obsession, uh, a lot of them are like, oh god, you know, it's... If they're all balling up together, it means something bad. No, it's more like a shark feeding, feeding frenzy. Unless they're trying to get out of the bin itself, you'd think of it more of as a shark feeding frenzy. These guys are not trying to get out. They are just trying to get their fill of all of the food I fed them about a week ago. So they're nowhere near ready for more feeding. So let me move down to the next bin. Here we are with the next bin. And just looking to see 
what they've done with some of my experimental bedding. Peel back, and you can see them all squirming around in the food. So this is what's happening when we're not looking. Lots of cabbage -y kind of things in here. I don't normally mess with them in between feedings. But since I cheated you guys out of a video last week, I figured we could at the very least take a have a look-see at them and see what they're doing. Yep, that's an onion. There are no forbidden foods. There are foods that you may wish you've never fed them that cause stink, like if it's on the same floor where you live, then possibly, you know, brassicas might offend your nose. But this is in the basement at the opposite end of the house, so I don't have a problem with it. All right, well, if you like the video, go ahead and give that a muddy thumbs up. If you like blue in the 55 gallon barrel, I have a playlist I will put right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like that video right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.